Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'm going to show you how I painted these railway tunnel portals. These are, obviously, for my N-scale model railway. I'm not quite ready to install them yet, and they will receive further weathering to blend in once they're installed. But for now, this is what I've got, so why not show you? I've got a couple of different tunnel portals, you know, for variety. Two of them are from Pico. Well, one of them is actually a bridge, but at least for this painting video, it might as well be the same thing. I've also got one from Nock, or Notch? I'm going with Nock. Both brands are reasonably neat right out of the packaging, though I do kind of like the more rough and less perfectly flat and regular look of the Nock tunnel, though they did require a little bit more cleanup to remove the burrs and moulding artefacts than the Pico ones did, but both did require some work. The back of the bridge has some little circles in the stonework, and I do intend to use that as a bridge, so that's going to be visible. It's a bit annoying, but it's easily fixed with a bit of putty. And here are the little wing things? I don't know what you would call these side walls. Retaining walls? Either way, those come with the Pico tunnels. Of course, they do look the same as the Pico tunnels. And I'm not totally sure if and how I'm going to use these, so I've left them separate for now. Speaking of knowing where your tunnels will be, I do have a vague idea, and I was thoughtful enough to at least make sure that the tunnels would fit over the tracks where I was thinking they'd go. Obviously I did this before the tracks were actually down, but I'm confident there's going to be plenty of room here. Before I start waffling any further, here's how I painted them. Putty is not paint, but here you can see I've used some green stuff to fill the holes and sculpt a bit of stonework detail over them. It's not perfect, but it's good enough, and at least it looks better than if I hadn't done this. I stuck all of the parts to popsicle sticks with blue tack, and then primed everything black. I forget which primer I used, it was probably Steinal Res. Just about any black primer would do though, or any other colour you might choose really. Then I apply some white. In this case, I'm using Vallejo Model Air White, and I'm just picking out a few individual blocks. I'm not being especially precise here, so a little bit of white on the adjoining blocks is fine. I am trying to avoid that, but I'm not going to cry about it if I don't. You don't need to watch me paint every single block, that would be kind of tedious, and this can take a fair bit of time. The reason I'm doing this is to provide a little bit of variation to the following grey colours, which I'm going to airbrush on. The first of which is Vallejo Model Air Dark Sea Grey. I did thin this just a tiny bit, though model air paint does go through the airbrush without any thinning. That is, as the name might suggest, what it's for. I wanted this layer to be fairly light, so as to not completely obscure the white blocks. This is not especially difficult to do, at least not with an airbrush. The result should be a slightly inconsistently opaque dark grey colour. The exact shade of grey isn't really that important. You can see I've left all of the tunnels in the back of the spray booth, because it doesn't really matter if they get a little bit of overspray. In fact, it's possible that might even help. Then I mix roughly two parts of the Dark Sea Grey with one part of Vallejo Model Air Light Grey. It's not a precise mix. I rarely do precise paint mixes, and even less so with this kind of thing. Unless you're trying to replicate an exact piece of rock, it's really just not that important. I just wanted a lighter grey, and I didn't have an appropriate pre-mixed one, so mixing colours was the way to go. Anyway, I'm just lightly spraying this over the tunnels, same as before. You can still see some of the white through it pretty well, but it's not consistent, which is the point. It should make it look more natural and random. I follow that with a third airbrushing, predominantly from above, with Model Air Light Grey. The reason I'm doing this mostly from above is to try and create some shadow in addition to just a bit more colour variation. It is very subtle, especially on the Pico tunnels. Subtle is what I'm going for here. Obviously you could just spray it one solid colour or omit the white under the greys, but I figure more colour variation is better and will make it look more interesting. I'm nowhere near finished adding colours to these. The next thing I did was to add a wash of Army Painter Dark Tone, which I thinned with water to a roughly 50-50 mix. As you can see, I'm pretty much just slopping it all over the model. It should sit in the recesses and darken those down a bit, but it will also darken the entire area you apply this to. Try to avoid letting this pool up too heavily, or you'll get ugly tide marks and such. 
If the first layer isn't dark enough for your tastes, you can always add another layer later, and that would be more effective than trying to apply too much at once. So far I think it's looking pretty reasonable. It's got some colour variants, but not quite enough for what I want. So more colours. First I pick out more individual blocks using Vallejo Model RC Grey. This is basically the same thing I did with the white, though obviously this time I'm trying to pick out different blocks than I did previously. It's not especially difficult to only pick out single blocks and not their neighbours, though it is a tiny bit more difficult on the Pico tunnels because they're flatter and less pronounced. What I've got there would be fine, but I wanted a bit more colour, so I repeat that step with some rubber and tyres from Ammo by MIG. I chose this colour because it has a slight sort of browny hue to it, and that makes it stand out just a little bit, not jarringly so, just a little bit. You can do this with as many colours as you like. There's a lot of variations of grey out there, or red or brown or pink or whatever colour you want your tunnel portals to be. For me though, I feel like maybe this is enough, at least for picking out individual blocks. Now it's time for some dry brushing. I'm using Vallejo model colour stone grey here. It has stone in the name, so it must be great for stone. That's how it works. Didn't you just use something called rubber and tyres? Quiet you. This is fairly simple. I'm just applying a fairly light dry brushing in a mostly downward motion. The idea being that the paint catches on the various edges and makes them stand out. Brushing downward makes it look like the light is hitting the stones from above and also sort of blends everything together. I think it's a bit more effective on the knock tunnel because it's a bit more three dimensional I guess I'd say, but it works well on both. If you're looking for a really good dry brush, a makeup brush, in particular a domed contour brush, works amazingly well and gives a really nice smooth look. But probably don't use your wife or girlfriend's makeup brushes. They're not that expensive, so just buy one of your own. Next I splash on another wash. This time it's Army Painter Strong Tone, which is a bit more of a brownie colour. Like the previous wash, it's mixed 50-50 with water. I could have left this at the previous step and it would have looked fine. I just wanted a little bit more variation and a bit of dirtiness, which this should provide. I left some of these upside down to dry, the idea being that any of the wash pooling up would be on the underside of the overhangs and look like shadow. This was kind of a mistake. Some of the pieces ended up with a bit of wash pooled up on top of them because I didn't think it would do that. That's okay though and it can be fixed. You can do that with paint or just wait until you install them and blend them in with the scenery. I used a wet q-tip to gently remove some of the excess dried wash and then I applied another very light dry brushing with the model colour stone grey again. Partially to cover up the remaining dried wash but also just to bring out the lightness on some of the edges again. The wash does leave a slightly glossy look on the paint job and unless you're modelling a rainy day you probably don't want that. I don't, so I applied a coat of ultra matte lucky varnish from Ammo by MIG, which as the name might imply is very matte. And that's it. The tunnels are completed, for now anyway. I was tempted to either airbrush or more likely dry brush some black to represent soot but I figured maybe it was a better idea to leave that until I knew exactly where the tracks would be in order to avoid misaligned soot. Misaligned soot is a horrible horrible crime, I assume. I've still not decided exactly where I'm going to put these tunnels on my railway and I don't even know if I'll use the bridge. Initially I bought that thinking it would go in the centre where the two boards join, but I neglected the fact that I have three tracks there and the tunnel will only fit across two. That's something for future Herbert to worry about. I will be doing additional weathering on these, but as with the soot, I feel like it's a better idea to do that once the portals are in place, so they can be blended in with the surrounding scenery, which doesn't exist yet, but it will. I may also want to do some additional sculpting with the side wall parts, so really, work on these is far from completed, but the basic paint job is done and now I've got a painting video done and people will stop harassing me about doing a painting video, right? Right? But Herbert, this isn't what I wanted you to paint! Oh no. Anyway, if you want to replicate what I've done here, or you're simply looking for some colour ideas, there's a list of paints I've used in the description below. As always, you can use whichever brands of paint or colours that you like. 
I'm not here to tell you what to do, but sometimes a list of colours can be a helpful starting point. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them in the comments section below. Be sure to subscribe here on YouTube for more of my model railway adventures and other modelling shenanigans. And if you'd like to see my videos a bit early before there's any ads, consider becoming a patron. You can find links to Patreon and all of my other things like Discord and social media in the description below. Take care of yourselves, be excellent to each other, and thank you for watching. Farewell.